This is my main workshop UPS. It's a 1500VA APC Smart UPS, which was made in 2006 and has been mined since, I think, 2011. And uh, I figured perhaps uh, it's approaching its 10th birthday, so it might be time to take it out and give it a bit of an overview. Uh, this unit has never acted up, but uh, like all APC Smart UPSs, it's going to have bad 22 microfarad caps in it. I'm also, despite replacing the batteries for these uh, just uh, a few months ago, I'm going to replace the batteries with two of these, uh, the bigger ones, the 74 amp hour, uh, 125 amp hour, when new power safe AGM batteries since uh, uh, these are just more suitable for the application they are 14 years old but uh, yeah the, uh, when I did the MPPT Morningstar review I noticed that they actually have quite impressive performance the voltage drop across them with uh, 75 amps of load was very good it was ba this one in particular was at on the load by the inverter back there and it stuck around 12 volts at 75 amps of load which is quite a bit more than can be said for these two old 74 amp hour car batteries and these batteries while being in basically new condition despite their age and you can only do perhaps 30 amp hours at the 30 -ish amps of load that this UPS draws on the high load so they might have better applications elsewhere. They are starter batteries after all, and above all they are flooded, so it's not really optimal to have them as UPS batteries when I have better options. So, time to get to it. This thing needs to be turned off, which is a rather rare occurrence. Alright, it's disconnected and out it comes. <laughs> it's been sitting here for quite a few years I haven't actually given this unit any attention and indeed it hasn't even been <laughs> moved since I put it here years ago as can probably be seen on the cleanliness of the floor then I know that's okay I was expecting there to be more dirt and grime out there either way time to get this one up on the bench and the vent facing the wall, well... <laughs> Full of cobwebs, probably some mould in there as well, since this is in the basement. I notice this thing has a stick I, or piece of tape I put on it with the original battery constant and voltage constant since I've tweaked this back when I got it. This was one of the first Smart UPS as I actually tweaked, which gives us a bit of history and certainly turns it a bit more deserving of service. There we go. Date code 640. If I really wanted to, I could add a Anderson connect on the back since I only run external batteries to this, but I don't think I can be bothered. And after making a hole, which very graphically and thoroughly demonstrates my inexperience regarding holes in both machines and humans we can move on to the actual subject of this disassembly namely to replace the 22 microfarad caps and that's a pretty simple procedure that you don't even need to take the PCB out for there's a total of five one, two, three there, and two stuck in there. It's usually the light blue ones, and I'm not even going to bother measuring them prior to taking them out because I know they're shot. They always are. Hmm. The soldering station is usually powered by the UPS, which is here. Out for the old, in with the new. So let's take a couple of. Uh, samples on what were replaced. So let's start by just uh, measuring a new cap to get a reference for what we should expect out of a 22 microfarad electrolytic. And we got 
760 milliohms and 23 microfarads in a new Nishikon PM series. That's a pretty high end cap, so you wouldn't expect quite as good specs out of these 85 degree rated. What's that? JH caps. <laughs> Real Chinese, no, no name rubbish. So let's test this one, and we've got 30 ohms and 16 microfarads, 12 ohms and 19 microfarads, 6, 15 ohms. Oh, I'm heating it up. 14 ohms and 18 microfarads. Where well, we're getting into high-end territory. 35 ohms and 15 microfarads. <laughs> And finally, whoa, 6 ohms and 20 microfarads. Wow, that one's almost brand spanking new. Hmm. It's a bit of a miracle these units work at all. I mean, you might as well not have a cap in the circuit. Mm. And as for moving the end of an input connector, you just Get a couple of long M3s and nuts, undo this screw, and Bob indeed is your uncle. And after a final bit of cable mensuring, we're ready for a first test. Let's go. There we go. Running like new. It used to have a horrible grunting noise when it first started up, but replacing the 22 microfarad caps eh, always basically fixes that, so this unit should be good to go. Although there are two final notes on the 22 microfarad cap replacements. Uh, one is that uh, you need to make sure there's proper clearance between these caps and the fan. If you're using anything other than rail or rail or small caps, you need to tilt them backwards a bit. And two, something that makes it very easy, negative always backwards to the unit. All of the 22s are oriented that way. So no need to really keep, keep check on them. I've never seen a unit that has had them oriented any other way. And finally we need to set the battery voltage, which should be about 27.4 for these batteries. And the resolution you get on these isn't magnificent. I think that might be just about the sweet spot since it tends to go down just a little after it checks the presence of a battery, or in this case, huge capacitor. Yeah, not this time though. But eh, 27.387 is good enough. It's 13.695 volts per battery, which uh, they probably are going to be sitting at around 18, 16 to 18 degrees Celsius, which means they should have around 13.7 uh, volts, just a little bit more. But eh, well, we'll just screw the temperature compensation and go with that. Okay, <laughs> we're over 27.4 now. We, these APCs have a bit of a weird habit of changing the battery charge voltage just a little bit, a few millivolts uh, every time they do the uh, battery presence test where they just shut off the charger, see if the, the voltage remains and then turning it back on and now we, <laughs> we're back at 27.386 so it seems it skips a PWM step or two not that it really matters, it's such a small value I think this will be good and there we go, everything's hooked up and we're ready to give it a test go. It hasn't exploded yet, but battery disconnect. Charges grown to life. 
and we seem to have operation. Yes, sir. So, I've reset the battery constant a bit, and basically all I should have left to do is run the battery calibration and see how well these perform. I should get considerably better on time than before, and I think I'm even saving a bit of space, and I can actually have the UPS sitting on top of the batteries now. And there's a whole lot less uh, exposed high current capable wiring, that's for sure. And I think the new, although still very bodgy and horrible, the battery connectors are going to be a bit more reliable than these world's cheapest battery clamps with some braided wire soldered on to onto them to lower the resistance a bit because this part was getting hot or rather this part was from continuous operation since well there's basically nothing actually connecting the two halves of these clamps together so I added some solder braid worked well enough for a fair amount of time but now we're moving into the future and it's pretty. And we have a soft test going at 27 amps and 23.8 volts. So this should take a couple of hours to complete and the battery voltage is going up even under almost 30 amps of load. That's more than can be said for the old batteries. Now you can also see my absolutely horrible homemade connections in, in lack of better alternatives. These are just cheap battery clamps that I drilled a hole in, cut to size and soldered the cable to. I don't have any fitting M6 terminals so as you make do. They're not getting warm or anything so it should be alright. And this is a genuine APC 100 amp fuse taken out of its casing, so we're even being all nice and fused here. These units don't have any internal fusing, so it really is rather important that you fuse it at the battery pack or add some kind of fusing of your own. I haven't had that before. I've basically just counted on if something shorts inside of that thing uh, something along the way would catch fire and break the connection. It's always nice listening to freshly recapped APC smart GPSs. This one used to have such a loud, horrible groaning noise to it, but now it's just a little bit of fan noise and that's it. Beautiful. After about two hours of calibration, we have some kind of verdict. It seems uh, it's roughly gonna run somewhere between uh, 350 400 minutes on a full charge. Probably a bit more since I think it cut the calibration a bit short due to the somewhat high internal resistance of these batteries. So, either way, 400 minutes is about uh, six hours, so. That should be good enough. However, something odd I noticed about my UPS is it only charges the battery at 2 amps, which is very weird. Most of these 1500VA smart UPSs do about 6 amps, but I brought in some reinforcements in the shape of a 750VA real XL unit which uh, charges us about 10 amps to 13 amps if it's really in the mood. Sparky spark. And now we've got an extra 9.3 amps so I don't have to sit and listen to these loud fans running all night long. He also took the liberty of adding a bit of a smart ass label to it. 
And that's us probably for this video. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.